Hi, today we are going to talk about treating medial epicondylitis using TENJET, which is a needle-like device developed by Hydrocision. The challenges of treating medial epicondylitis are concerns for sensitive structures such as the ulnar nerve that are relatively nearby, but are easily avoided utilizing ultrasound visualization. The TENJET device delivers a high-velocity jet of saline to efficiently and safely debride and aspirate diseased tissue in a short period of time. The procedure is done under ultrasound guidance and provides an opportunity to utilize a minimally invasive approach to treat chronic tendon pain, which leads to rapid recovery and rapid restoration of function. Prior to the procedure, the patient is draped and prepped in a sterile fashion with the patient's arm placed in an externally rotated position to expose the medial epicondyle. The procedure is performed under ultrasound guidance to visualize both the pathologic tissue as well as the positioning of the TENJET device. Once I have identified this, I begin to scan the tendon in an axial and longitudinal view to identify and confirm location of the pathology. To ensure that the patient has minimal discomfort during the procedure, I administer a local anesthetic. As I guide the needle with ultrasound, I anesthetize the flexor tendon mass and then the needle track through the subcutaneous tissue. With the anesthetic, I make sure to administer it both medial and laterally to make sure the area is covered. Using an 11 blade scalpel, I make a small stab incision down to the tendon to create a pathway for the TENJET device. Once I have created a pathway, I guide the TENJET device toward the pathology and towards the cortical structure of the bone. As you can see on ultrasound, the TENJET device going down towards the diseased tissue is identified. When the device is in the proper position, I depress the foot pedal to initiate debridement using the high velocity jet of saline. When debriding the diseased tissue, I motion the device in a gentle pistoning motion forward and backwards or rotating the device to reach all of the pathology that is causing pain for the patient. I go deep into the tendon but also debride the superficial fibers to ensure uniform healing throughout the tendon. Depending on what I see on ultrasound, I repeatedly reposition the probe, scan the tendon to identify and debride any remaining disease tissue, and this usually takes three to five minutes to debride all of the diseased areas. I can see that we have great consistency now throughout the tendon. Since the procedure is performed through a stab incision, there is no need for sutures. I place a Steri-Strip and a small gauze band-aid over the incision, which is then covered with Tegaderm. As you can see, TENJET enables a quick and efficient method to perform a percutaneous tenotomy. Patients typically see decreased pain in as few as two to three days following the procedure. Because we want a little bit of the inflammation associated with the procedure, I have patients avoid any anti-inflammatory medication for at least two weeks after the procedure. They can use ice, however. In my practice, I also instruct patients to avoid lifting in the extremity until follow-up in the clinic. I do tell them that fine motor tasks are okay to perform. When we see the patient postoperatively, we then typically start an eccentric rehabilitation exercise program to further rehabilitate the tendon. Mm -hmm.